Our story begins 25 years ago aboard a prison transport shuttle bound for the Lunar Penal Colony. It is the tale of one man's mistake which is compounded by the passage of time until it creates a twisted web of lies so snarled that only Sherlock Holmes can unravel the truth. This is wrong. We can't do this. Listen, Armitage, do you want to spend the next 25 years of your miserable life cleaning algae tanks on the moon? But I'm innocent. <laughs> That's what they all say. When my appeal is heard, I'll be released. I can't jeopardize my chances by breaking out now. No one will believe you weren't part of it. You're in it up to your neck now, just like the rest of us. So go on, take the keys and unlock the other cells. I said go! Space Central Skywatch, Space Central Skywatch. I need you to get a message to the Lunar Police. There's a prison break in progress. Trevor! You worthless Zed, where are you? Get your carcass out here where I can Who see you. Who are you? What is your location? Can you give us more details? We're on a prison shuttle bound for the moon. That's all I can tell you. I have to go now. Wait! Don't disconnect! We need to establish your... What are you doing in there? I was uh, looking for weapons, and, and I found the emergency transmitter, so I smashed it. No one can rat us out now. Good work, lad. Looks like you're one of us after all. What do you think you're... Stow it! We're taking over the ship. Turn it around, now! I can't do it. We're too far past the halfway point. We're going back to Earth. There's not enough fuel to get us back and land safely. In that case, we'll be taking the escape pods. All of them. And just to make sure you don't try to follow us. Wait, Hudson, don't do it! <laughs> You're in it up to your neck now. <laughs> Sayonara, suckers. This is prison shuttle. Prisoners escaped. Damaged guidance system. Drifting. Ethernet radio disabled. We are doomed. Sherlock Holmes. Bring Sherlock Holmes back to life. Back to life. It's elementary, my dear Watson. Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd century. Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd century. Prisoners used a solution of acidic salts which short-circuited the force fields, allowing them to break through the wall without detection. Simple. And most ingenious. When did they make their escape, Lestrade? Three days ago. Hmm, they could be on the moon by now. We shall resume the hunt tomorrow. Ah, Holmes! Hello, Watson. Who is this visitor from Norfolk who has come to see me in such a hurry? Not Victor Trevor, is it? Why, yes! Okay, Holmes, how'd you know? 
tell all. Elementary, my dear Lestrade. A hastily parked hovercraft right outside my door, covered in alluvial mud found only in a certain area of Norfolk, where my friend Victor Trevor maintains a summer house. Eyes and brains, Inspector. Victor! What a pleasure. I haven't seen you since that industrial espionage case we consulted on together. Lestrade, this is Victor Trevor, a bright young man and an expert in industrial forensics. Can I speak freely in front of her? Absolutely. As freely as you would to me or Watson alone. Very well. Holmes, I need your help. My father Edward is being blackmailed. Really? What makes you think that? He's drawn large sums from the business over the last three days, but there's no reason. Our bills were paid and we didn't know anyone anything. You know, there may be other reasons. Right. Have you asked him why? When the accountants called, I came to the city immediately. I've tried to get Father to talk about the money, but he refuses. Then I found this note mixed in with his financial papers. To my third son, your Gloria was a Scot. It doesn't make sense. I am his only son. I know no one named Gloria, Scottish or otherwise. I've tried to talk to him, but he's acting most peculiar. The most challenging conundrum. I shall turn my full attention to your case, Victor. Hold on, Holmes. New Scotland Yard needs your expertise. You just can't go off and... Uh, sorry, Lestrade. Uh, Victor is my friend. But more than that, he is a friend in need. Holmes, there are perps on the loose. Uh, New London could be under siege. M Moriarty could be involved. I offer a compromise. Watson will be most glad to assist you, and I will consult as needed. Jolly well right. Yes, but... No buts about it. Come, Victor. Well, Inspector, perhaps you should start by briefing me on the current status of the case. Oh, God. Nearly there, Holmes. I am depending on your powers of observation here. There have been some mysterious things going on in the last few days. Unless I'm imagining things. Like that man watching your father's house with night glasses. Yes! He, at least, is most certainly not a figment of your imagination. Father, I would like you to... Later, leave. Victor. Look now, this is Mr. Hudson. He is joining the firm and will be our new partner. You will answer to him from now on. Nice speech, Eddie. But, Father... I have decided. No more discussion. Hello, Victor. How nice we're going to be partners together and sharing the good life, eh, lad? Excuse us. Let them go. Holmes, what is happening? Let me see that note again. Cyberfield surrounding the prison wall was mysteriously broken, allowing a number of prisoners to escape. Only two of these men are still at large. Hmm, this must mean something. Victor, my third son. Your Gloria was a Scot. It's simply total nonsense, Holmes. My father must be losing his mind. Look at that man Hudson. What kind of riffraff is he bringing into the company? What could he be thinking? Maybe this note is his way of telling us. The word third could be the key. If we look at every third word after that, we get the name Gloria Scott. I believe this could be a clue. Have you heard that name before? No. Who could she be? Maybe your father will tell us. Victor, I noticed he has two tattoos on his arm. One with the initials J.A. and one with a barcode. What do they mean? I don't know. He never... Impossible! You're asking too much! Come on! I absolutely refuse to listen will. to you doing... Down! What are you doing, Victor? Are you spying on me? Not at all. Holmes was wondering if you knew someone named Gloria Scott. No, I don't! Mr. Holmes, this is none of your business. I must ask you not to interfere in my family's affairs. Please leave my property at once. You tell him, Eddie. Mind your own business, Snoop. Or I'll mind it for you. You hear? Father, who is this man? Oh! Now look what you've done. Go away! Victor, I think we need to go now. We have given ourselves away. You may be in danger if you stay here now. I'm afraid we'll have to do something about this nosy Mr. Holmes. How did he know about Gloria Scott? I haven't the slightest. You let me handle this, Hudson, or I'll... Oh, your what? Call New Scotland Yard? <laughs> This is most odd. Your father has led an exemplary life, but it is as if this life started almost exactly 25 years ago. 25 years ago? Well, that's when he started his robot tech business. Just before he married my mother, a year later I came along. But what of his life before then? 
Let's get down to business. Any thoughts on where the final two escape prisoners might be? Logic dictates that they will go for safety and easy access to transport. Right. So, let's search the Central Hover Station at Waterloo. That's brilliant, Inspector. I'll get right on it. Oh, wait! There appear to be no records for our friend Hudson. But that is impossible, Holmes. Everyone is registered. Obviously, not his real name. Too bad we didn't get a DNA scan. As for Gloria Scott, there are dozens of women by that name, but none with any obvious connection to your father. There are several references to women named Gloria Scott around the time your father's records appear, but I think we need to go back and ask your father a few more questions about this mystery lady. That is if he will answer them. Holmes, I think we're being followed. Good. The very fact that he is following us tells me we are on to something. When we reach our destination, perhaps we will learn why he is following us. been inside. Yes, but we weren't, which leads me to believe it was meant as a warning to keep us away, not to injure us. I hope you're right. You call the fire department. I shall call the yard and give them the description of the craft that was following us. Watson, this is a waste of time. Wait, go back. Now, Lestrade, there are two very suspicious characters, if I am not mistaken, and I'm usually not. Hello, gentlemen. May I see your identification cards? Routine check, that's all. Aye. Hudson's the name and insurance is my game. Just one moment, sir. Oh, dear, I'm afraid I've left my papers in my other trousers. How inconvenient. What's the problem, officers? No problem, sir. Just a formality. And you are... Edward... No! I can't carry on this charade anymore. My name... My real name is James Armitage, and this man is Leonard Henry. Ya fool! The man who blew up my friend's hovercraft was one of the outstanding escapees from the prison breakout. Relay that information to Watson and Lestrade immediately, officer. Thank you. Holmes, I can't find my father or Hudson, but I've discovered another mysterious note. Victor, I know four is too many. The pheasants seem odd game, but all sense is, from the bottom up, your father. He is using the same code, but now it is every fourth word. It reads, the game is up. Time to bring in new Scotland Yard. At last, we're getting somewhere. The databank shows these two were on the Riley 25 years ago, along with the man who blew up Victor Trevor's hovercraft. Really? They were part of the group that made that impossible escape from the prison shuttle? The very same. So, perhaps we can finally find out how they did it. Look here, Armitage. Tell us what happened. What does Henry hold over you? We know about the Riley. We know you escaped. You've been living free as a bird for 25 years, but that's all over now. Tell us about it. Maybe we can help you. Armitage, another transport is leaving for the moon in three hours. Unless you tell us everything, you and your chum Henry will be on it. I have nothing to say. You give me no choice. Take him away. Do you think we will ever find out exactly what happened on the Riley 25 years ago? Not from those two. Holmes, welcome back. Victor's father has disappeared. Have you picked up anyone suspicious in the last two days? Watson Collard, the last of our escaped prisoners. Leonard Henry, the ringleader. He and the man we arrested with him were part of the lot who escaped 25 years ago from the Riley. The Riley? I remember reading about that. It was a prison shuttle en route to the Lunar Penal Colony. Oh, right. There was a big scandal. <laughs> Gloria made them take her name off it. Gloria. Please, elaborate. 
Gloria Scott Riley, the woman who pioneered algae farming on the moon. The shuttle was christened in her honor. So that is what Edward Trevor meant by that note. Watson, what were the names of the men you arrested today? James Armitage and Leonard Henry. James Armitage, J.A., also known as Victor's father. The other man must be Hudson. Where are they now? They wouldn't talk to us, so I had them sent back to the moon for debriefing. Takeoff is in 15 minutes. The moon? Can you stop them, Holmes? Maybe. Lestrade, I will need your driving skills. Victor's father is in grave danger. Watson, call the shuttle and tell them another prisoner is arriving. Then, get me to the man who supplies your canine patrols, fast. Holmes, how did you figure out that my father was James Armitage? He gave us all the clues. The initials, J.A., tattooed on his arm. The other tattoo was his moon base prisoner code. Gloria Scott was part of the name of the prison shuttle and not a person from his earlier life. Then, when Henry, the man he introduced to us as Hudson, re-entered his life, he knew the game was up. He was convicted of a minor crime when he was your age. He might have been freed on appeal if he had not escaped first. You lost your nerve, Armitage. You had everything. All I asked was my piece of it. I was the one sitting in prison for ten years while you were living off the fat of the land. Not my fault you couldn't go straight. Watch your mouth, you self-righteous weasel. If they ever find out what really happened on the rally... Company! Better get to know each other while you strap yourselves in for takeoff. <laughs> you might have eons. <laughs> Yee oh, a little trick I taught myself. When you're in prison, you have a lot of time on your hands. Some people have a photographic memory. I have an audiographic memory, and my hearing, it's as sharp as a dog's. Most prison locks are key to a series of audiotronic pulses. They can't make them electronic or hollow. They'd be too easy to hack open from the outside. But... Ultrasonics now. Who can mimic that, huh? If they thought the Gloria Scott was a mystery, let them solve this one. The Gloria Scott? You were behind that. Quiet. You want out of here or not? I have to be able to hear the overtones. This one will be a piece of cake. Soon as we clear the Van Allen belt, we'll be as free as birds. The ship will be ours. Clever. I have plenty of practice in jail. Those doors open and close a hundred times a day. I'll memorize the codes to them all. Armitage, or should I say Trevor? It is I, Sherlock Holmes. Holmes? How did you... Later. What does he hold over you? I must know the answer. When Hudson took over the Gloria Scott, I was the one who smashed the emergency radio. He made me part of his escape. He threatened to expose me to Victor and the police unless I paid him. Is there nothing I can do? Quit your yapping. I'm trying to sleep and advise you to do the same. After we break out, there'll be no time for naps till we're back on Earth. I didn't want Victor to know any of this. Guess it's too late for that now. I'm ready to confess everything. It is not the time. Just play along for the moment, for Victor's sake and for your own. Here we go. Sesame! Hang there, lads. I'm going to get myself an ionizer. Come on! Holmes, this is a nightmare. Just follow my lead. Don't move a muscle, Captain. You take care of the emergency radio and disable the emergency pods. Except the one we'll be using, of course. You're not going to leave these men without any way to escape. Why not? Who says lightning can't strike twice? What do you care? We'll soon be back on Earth with new names and new identities. I can't be party to this twice. Then stay here and take the shuttle. It's a long ride to nowhere. Not again! Stay back! 
I shall take care of this. Die! Don't move, Hudson. The game's over. I didn't want to bring shame on you. I don't care what you did. You're still my father, and I love you. How sweet. A felon and son reunion. You mustn't be so cynical, Lestrade. Edward Trevor is a true hero, and the security tapes of the happenings on the shuttle will prove it. He told us of your trick with the dog whistle you got from the supply officer, Holmes. Very clever. How did you know Hudson was so sensitive to ultrasonics? Simple, Watson. When I first met him, he reacted to something that I could not hear. And then, every dog in the neighborhood started barking. I imagine the prisons will be changing their locking systems now. Nay, Lestrade. Yes, I alerted them. I suppose some good did come of this. Inspector, what will happen to me? I know I've done wrong. All I care about is paying my debt to society and getting back to my son. I understand from Holmes that you risked your life to stop Hudson. I'm positive that your actions will be taken into account. In fact, I'll make sure of it. Thank you, Holmes. How can I possibly repay you? You just did, Victor. After all, what are friends for?